So when discussing the chemical bond, there's really um, just two types. There's ionic, which involves the transfer of electrons. And then there's covalent, which involves the um, sharing of electrons. And uh, first thing we need to do when determining which type of uh, chemical bond we're talking about is to focus on the uh, balanced electrons. So let's just uh, review real quick. We have a periodic table. We have uh, group one, group two, your transition metals. Let's say this is group three, starting um, with uh, boron, group four, group five, group six, group seven, and group eight might be cut off a little bit. And uh, that tells you how many balanced electrons uh, are uh, e each atom has in that particular group. So, so we start with something like sodium. Sodium is one balanced electron and we want to combine it with chlorine. Chlorine has seven balanced electrons. So we have Na with its one balanced electron here and Chlorine, which has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven balanced electrons, right? And uh, these guys are going to want to bond together because chlorine just needs one electron to complete its octet in the outer shell to make eight. So any group one element is going to be a perfect candidate for that. That's why you have uh, HCl, uh, you see uh, NaCl is pretty common, and uh, so on. So well, what is the, uh, what, well, what's exactly the behavior of these electrons when it makes this bond here. To become sodium chloride. Well, it depends on one thing. It depends on its uh, electronegativity. So, electronegativity is how strongly attracted uh, electrons are to a particular element. So fluorine is the most electronegative atom. That is going to um, draw a lot of electrons toward it. Uh, chlorine is also pretty highly electronegative, so it's also going to draw electrons toward it. All these compounds in the upper right hand corner of the periodic table uh, are going to be very electronegative and um, they love electrons. They want electrons to complete uh, the octet in their outer shell and um, that's why if they gain electrons um, they're going to form ions which are negatively charged so you might see something like S minus, Cl minus, Br minus, I minus and so on uh, because all of them need uh, one electron in their outer shell and if you gain one electron it's going to be a negative one charge you might see uh, oxygen like O2 minus or minus two because oxygen is pretty electronegative, but it's going to want to gain two electrons in its um, outer shell to make the octet or eight. Uh, elements in, in group one, group two, they're, they're not so electronegative, so they're going to wind up losing electrons. And depending on how many balanced electrons they have will determine uh, their charge. For example, if you have group one elements and they're, and they're all um, not very electronegative, they're going to lose electrons to, uh, let's say, a more electronegative 
uh, partner to make a chemical bond. So these are going to have uh, plus one charges, right, as ions. And uh, group two uh, have two balanced electrons to give. So once they give them both away, since an electron is negatively charged, it's going to be uh, all these guys are going to have po positive two charges, right, as ions. So, <clears throat> looking at sodium and chlorine, one has an electronegativity of 3.16, the other 0.93. So if you take these guys as the electronegativities of these two elements since chlorine is very electronegative it's actually going to take the electron from sodium to make an octet All right. so even though you might see sodium chloride written like this what's actually happening is that there is a transfer of that electron to make the bond which is ionic so what you have is this in actuality chlorine plucked off sodium's electron leaving sodium with a plus one charge and that chlorine has a minus one charge for an overall net charge of zero since plus one and minus one is zero so this is an actual uh, actually an ionic bond with a complete transfer of an electron you know it's ionic because what you need to do is subtract the electronegativities and what you get is 6 minus 3 is 3 and uh, 3.1 minus 0.9 is going to give you 6 minus 2 2.23 any bond where you subtract the electronegativities and it's greater than 1.9 is considered ionic that's how you know there's a complete transfer of uh, electrons, or in this case, one electron. Right. So let's recap that. First thing you need to do is to determine whether a bond is ionic or covalent is to look up their electronegativities. And once you look up their uh, electronegativities on an electronegativity table, all you need to do is subtract. Again, if it's greater than 1.9, it's ionic. So obviously, if it's less than 1.9, it's uh, covalent. And uh, again, it, it is important to really understand uh, exactly what it means to be ionic. Ionic means that there's a complete transfer of electron to make the bond. And this bond is actually the result of an electrostatic attraction now because you have a plus charge here and a minus charge here because the electron actually moved. Okay. Let's take another one. And um, so what I'm going to do is... I'm going to take a compound like methane. And uh, with methane, um, CH4, it's going to have four bonds surrounding the carbon. And um, again, if you really want to understand exactly what's going on, uh, it always helps to go back to the groups and the periodic table 
um, carbons in group 4, 1, 2, skip the transition metals, 3, 4, which means that it's 4 valence electrons, and hydrogen's in group 1, so it is 1 valence electron. So what you have is something like this. Carbon, 1, 2, 3, 4. Now remember, it, you need at least 2 electrons um, to make 1 uh, single uh, bond. Right? Actually, you need exactly two electrons to make one single bond. And um, where is it going to get the other electron for each one of these guys to make the four bonds? Well, it's going to take it from the hydrogen, since hydrogen has one, has one balanced electron to donate. Right? So you can do something like this. So carbon's going to donate each one of its balanced electrons, and hydrogen is going to donate each one of its balanced electrons. So that's how you get CH4, right? Now the question is, is this ionic or covalent? Well, very simple. Um, look at a electronegativity table. Carbon's electronegativity is 2.55. Hydrogen's is 2.20. 2.55 minus 2.20 is going to give you, once you subtract, 0.35. Now remember, the cutoff point was 1.9. Right? Anything greater is ionic. This is much less, so this is an obvious, this is, these are each obviously covalent bonds. So covalent bond here, covalent bond here, covalent bond here, and a covalent bond here. All right. Now, there's actually two types of covalent bonds. This happens to be a nonpolar covalent bond because it's less than 0 0.5. The other type is polar covalent, which is uh, between 0 0.5 up to and including 1.9. So, so again, we still have ionic and covalent bonds depending on their electronegativities, but the covalent bond is broken down into two um, two different categories, nonpolar covalent and polar covalent. We determined that the methane was a nonpolar covalent bond for each one of these guys here, right? Or actually contained four nonpolar covalent bonds. So <clears throat> uh, let's try to find an example where we would get a polar covalent bond. Polar meaning that it, it does have a plus and a minus uh, associated with it, like you know, po the polar ends of a magnet, like North-South Pole, which is where the name comes from. But uh, it, it's not as uh, uh, polar where it gets to the point that it's uh, in the ionic category. So let's try hydrochloric acid. HCl. Okay. And we're going to analyze this bond here, which we know is a single bond, so it's made up of two electrons. One comes from the chlorine, one comes from the hydrogen. Let, let's take a close look to see exactly what's going on here in our periodic table. Chlorine is part of group 7, so it has seven valence electrons. Hydrogen is in group 1, has one valence electrons. So obviously, Since chlorine is pretty electronegative, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, more so than hydrogen, it's going to pull that electron towards itself. Okay. Similar to the sodium chloride. Right. Okay. 
to make this slightly positive since it lost an electron and this slightly negative. The question remains was the plucking strong enough to form an ionic bond where there is just uh, solely this electrostatic interaction and not really a sharing of electrons. Well, we got to go back to our electronegativity table and we see that chlorine is 3.16, hydrogen is 2.20. So we do 3.16 minus 2.20 and we get minus 2 is 9 0 0.96. 0 0.96 is greater than 0.5 but less than 1.9 so it doesn't cross into the ionic category but so we know it's covalent but it doesn't fall into the non-polar covalent category it must be polar covalent which means that there's still a sharing of electrons but there is some polar characteristic to this bond since chlorine is so electronegative it, it's kind of um, pulling the electron towards it but uh, hydrogen is still able to hold on to a bit of this electron might be a good way to um, describe it okay. so it doesn't completely pluck it off like it did uh, with the sodium All right. And um, going back to electronegativity, yeah, Linus Pauling uh, won the Nobel Prize uh, in 1954. He also developed uh, the electronegativity table and uh, gave a lot of insight into um, uh, how these chemical bonds work. So check it out.